Publishing your first research paper can be intimidating. There's just so much to do and you do not know where to start. In this video, we're going to talk about the process of publishing a research paper. What should you go for? Conferences or journals? And finally, we're also going to be talking about whether paid journals are worth it and should you go for paid or unpaid journals. So that's everything that we're going to be talking about in this video. By the way, did you know that publishing a research paper typically takes from three months to one year? Yes, it can be pretty time taking. And this is excluding the time you take out to actually work through these details and actually build your project, the research project that is. Well, no worries, we're gonna make sure that we understand how to fasten the process as well in this video. By the way, before we move on with the video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, know that we basically make videos about everything you need to study anywhere in the world. In case you are interested in programs like MBA, MS, or literally any other program that you would be thinking about right now, I'm pretty sure we are already covering that on our channel. So please consider subscribing. We are also going to be bringing out a lot of information about thousands of scholarships that you can use to make sure that your tuition goes lower. With that, let's get started with the video. The first step over here, the process of publishing a research paper. Now, you might already know there's a lot of types of papers, but the ones that I think are the most talked about, the most popular are, you know, even if I'm just broadly classifying them, the number one is the review paper. Okay, what is the review paper? The review paper is basically when you understand that, all right, these are this is a research problem and I would like to sort of see what other people have done, you know, the, the approaches that they have taken. And you read all the papers and you compile everything in one. That basically just means that you have a research paper on your hands. The other thing that you do, and which is also like a full-fledged research paper, is where you basically follow through the whole process of actually publishing a research paper or actually doing the project that is going to be published as a research paper. Now, I'm going to be telling you the steps for that. Let's just call it a full-fledged research paper, okay? Now, in order to actually go about that, the first thing you should do is to select a research problem. What everyone else in your field is dealing with, it could be a very familiar problem or you could basically go down very deep. It could even be an analysis. For instance, you get a lot of data from Twitter and you can then just run some analysis on it. Even that can be a very good candidate for a paper. By the way, did you know that I published three research paper before these? Uh, so that's where I'm getting the um, sort of experience from. Two of those I could find as you can find in the screenshots, like they're already on some websites, but the third one I couldn't really find. That's something that I just wanted to share with you guys, thought you would enjoy. So yes, and Analysis papers are also very very crucial. They happen all the time. Okay, so you, the number one step like I talked about was to uh, Select a research problem. The next step is to read the review papers Like I said those review papers which have already tested out that all right These are the most common approaches, you know one two three These approaches are already taken by the authors all over the world Okay, so you finally find out that, all right, these are the things that have already been done. You understand that, okay, maybe we can solve it in this way or this way. And then once you know all of the ways, the third step comes in, which is to find a better solution. Now you need to find a better solution, compare it with all the other solutions out there. Okay, you can run analysis based on any sorts of efficiency measures that you would be using in your scenario. So in order to do that, maybe because you read a lot of research papers, or you read a lot of review papers before you already know that all right maybe i can merge these two processes um you know author one from paper one was doing this and you know author two from paper two was doing this and maybe if i just merge these the process becomes a lot more efficient hey that might work something like that often comes around and with that you can easily find a better solution and then you can compare and contrast it and run analysis with the other uh, and compare it basically with the other papers that have already been published by the other authors okay once you get this stage, you officially have a research paper candidate in, in your hand. Basically, you can do that. You can publish that. In order to do that, here comes step number four. You have to find a conference or a journal. Remember, a lot of things are... They basically, this is very deep. We can talk about edge index. We can talk about a lot of other things. But the one thing that maybe you can look at as a starter when you're publishing your first research paper is the impact factor. The impact factor, the higher, the better. Okay, however, I cannot say that, you know, the impact factor is basically very, very relevant to the fields. Okay, so 
maybe in computer science the impact factor of four would be good but in agriculture maybe the impact factor of four is not so good maybe it needs to be as high as ten so it completely depends on the area that you are working in all right and when you're taking a look at the impact factor i would suggest taking a look at scopus based journals basically scopus indexed journals because those impact factors are pretty much you can say verifiable they are actually relevant they're true okay there are a lot of other indexes out there do not follow a lot of other indexes there are some good ones as well i'm pretty sure like thompson Reuters is a pretty good one but um i would say just try to stick to scopus if possible in the beginning okay now with that after you select the journal after you know that all right this is the journal i want to publish my research paper in you go on to their website you get the format that they want you to put the paper in so every journal would have a format that they want you to sort of um kind of you know make your paper into so you have to convert your paper into their format once you find it it may be a latex document it may be just a word document you write your paper down in the same format okay with that done we can now finally move on to step number six and that is to submit your paper for review okay now this is probably the last step you can see over here you submit it for review but hey it's not as easy as soon as they review it they might have some changes they might want you to make some fixes so yeah the process may go to and fro a little bit but after iterating through it maybe two or three times your paper should be basically ready and you should be able to be in a position that you can just go on and publish it at this point okay now that's really everything that i wanted you to know about the process of publishing i know i did not go very deep because this is probably for the people who are watching it for the first like basically they want to publish their first research paper and i think this much information should be enough of course if you want to go deep there's probably no limit to how deep you can go okay now i'm gonna go over some of the most commonly asked questions um the one thing that we're going to cover over here is should you go for journal or conference papers okay now i'm gonna go over these very very briefly okay i think that the journal papers basically just take longer to publish so if you have some time on your hands maybe you know eight nine months or more then you should go for journal papers of course journal papers are basically they count usually and this is there are exceptions but usually they count twice as much as compared to a conference paper okay so yeah that might be it However, if you think your paper is not good enough or your research is not good enough, in that case, you can just go on for a conference paper where you will be in the presence of a lot of other researchers and you'll maybe gain more, more experience before you actually move on to your first journal paper. Okay. And finally, there's another thing that, you know, journal papers are peer reviewed. So you can basically sort of guarantee that the quality over there would be higher. Again, like I said, there are exceptions, but in this case, journal papers, I would say usually, generally, typically take the lead. Okay. <laughs> Right. The other thing that I want to talk, talk about was another one of your most common doubts and that is should we go for a paid journal or um, should we go for a free journal, you know, where you do not have to pay unpaid journal. Well, I would suggest that, you know, think about it this way. If you're just paying someone to publish your paper, it's not as good as publishing it in an unpaid one. Not just because you're paying someone. Hey, there are people who pay a lot of money. There are reasons for that. But I would say at first, Try to go for an unpaid journal if you have the time that is. If you do not have time, then just go for a paid one. Paid ones do not hold as much value, by the way, as the unpaid ones. That is for sure. Okay, they might show you an impact factor that is higher. Again, they the impact factor will usually not be scoopers indexed as far as I know. And the paid ones would just be in the business of publishing your paper and making money. In fact, if they tell you that the cost of publishing a paper is $100, you say, hey, I cannot afford that much and they would just reply and they would probably tell you that hey we're gonna give you a 50 percent discount you can publish it at 50 dollars so yeah that's something that happens a lot in paid journals okay but one thing is that you know they usually can have more reach as compared to some of the lower level unpaid journals so your paper gets basically in front of more eyes and secondly it's easier to publish over there of course it is also faster to publish over there okay but usually they are worthless in most cases and if you just need it to show someone that you know hey i've published a research paper then you can use it but if they are someone who is a pro at this they already know everything about it they would find it wouldn't take them more than five minutes to find out that the journal quality is not that good okay so yeah that's everything i want to talk to you about regarding publishing research papers now if you would like to connect with other applicants who are going for their studies all over the world 
we have built a social network for you. It's called whyimgrad.com. You can go ahead and do that. However, one thing, if you do not want to publish research papers on your own, but you do need them, I just want to point out that we do have a service on our services page where we can help you publish those research papers. So be sure to check that out on whyimgrad.com slash service and you'll be able to directly work with me for the, your research papers if that's something that you are interested in. Again, I hope that this process helped you out and I wish you all the best in publishing your first research paper. Do comment down below once you actually do publish one and I would love to see the link to one maybe. Alright, have a good day. I'll see you in the next one.